And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Treasure of Kublai Khan. It would be impossible for him to still be alive. What was that? What? The sound I just heard. Only the call of the jackal, Miss Carlton. It frightened me. It is a brother to the wolf. They say its call means misfortune. There it is again. Take it easy, Marion. I don't know why I'm so nervous. Unless... Unless what? I had that same dream last night, Brad. But it was just a dream, Marion. I know, but... But it was so real. Even when I woke up, I... I felt that I'd actually been there. That you and Mr. Hussein were really dead. Go back. Go back. Let death be your reward. Fantasy will present The Treasure of Kublai Khan in just a moment. And now for our story, The Treasure of Kublai Khan. I first heard of the legendary treasure the night I met Abdul Hussein. Marion had invited me to the dinner that evening. Her brother, Brad Carlton, had some business with Hussein, and he too was invited for dinner. It was after the meal, when we had adjourned to the living room, that I first heard the tale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Abdul, I imagine some of our customs do seem strange to it you. It is quite strange, my friend. <laughs> when do you intend your return trip to Iran, Mr. Hussein? Well, I shall spend another two months in your country, Miss Carlton. Then I shall be forced to return to mine. I hope you have received a good impression of us. Oh, I would say I have. Though I will never understand why you people... Must have everything done so quickly. You don't enjoy life. Always running from one place to another, trying to save time. <laughs> I guess that's just the way we are. I yeah. shall never understand that. Abdul, when you were in my office today, you told me a little tale about Kublai Khan. I think Alan and Marion will be interested in hearing it. Oh, I am not so sure they would. Oh, no, please, tell us the story. Oh, we'd like to hear it. If you insist. Do either of you know much about Kublai Khan? Hmm. Just that he was the ruler of Mongolia and the Mongol Empire. I'm afraid I don't know much more than that. It is amazing to me that we tend to remember only one or two facts about a man after he has been dead for some time. Yet, their stories are there in the dry pages of the history books. And if one can read between the lines, the man comes alive. Kublai Khan was a fascinating person. Under him, the empire reached its greatest heights. To his treasure houses came the wealth and the money of the conquered peoples. I wonder whatever happened to all that treasure. Well, it was probably spent or destroyed. You are right to a point. What do you mean? Most of the treasure was naturally spent or destroyed, especially after Kublai's death and the struggle for power which followed his demise. But there is one treasure catch, according to legend, which was lost, and to this day remains intact. Well, you can't be serious, Mr. Hussein. But I am, my dear Miss Carlton. Where is it hidden? <laughs> that is the only barrier which remains to be overcome. No one knows where it is hidden. 
The general area is known, yes, but the specific location is not. Well, what general area? It is said that the lost treasure of Kublai Khan lies somewhere between the Deshti Keber Desert and the Elburz Mountains. But that's in your country. The seat of government for Kublai Khan was in northeastern China. So it was. Well, why wouldn't Kublai Khan keep his treasure where he could get to it easily? Why would he hide it almost 3,000 miles away? I shall answer your question with a question. Why would he not only be interested in northeastern China? Why would he send his emissary, Marco Polo, to the far corners of his empire? No. Kublai Khan's interests were large. His armies had to be paid, and they ranged all over his vast empire, guarding its borders. Why would he not hide treasure in old Persia? Hmm, I didn't think about it that way. Yet it is quite logical. Shall I tell you what I know of the legend? Oh, yes. please do. I'm sure they'd like to hear it. Shortly after he founded the Yuan dynasty in the year 1260, Kublai Khan had reason to believe that an attempt would be made to overthrow him. Kublai Khan was not sure whether the attempt would succeed or not, but if the attempt were made and was successful, then Kublai Khan planned to escape to Persia, from whence he would be able to direct an attack against the usurper. Accordingly, he sent for one of his ablest generals. You sent for me, O Khan? Yes, General Ling. You are to take enough men and supplies to transport the shang treasure to Persia. There you will hide it and guard it. As you order, magnificent. When the treasure has been hidden, you are to kill all but a few of your most trusted men, so that no one will know the hiding place. If need be, destroy them all, and guard the treasure yourself until such time as I send to you. Yes, O oh great God. Remember, General Ling, if you must, destroy everyone, so that no enemies will stand at our backs with their daggers poised. It shall be as you desire, O oh Khan. Not one will escape alive. The treasure was transported to Persia. True to his word, General Ling picked a few of his followers and together they destroyed the others. And then, one by one, Ling himself killed those that were left. <coughs> Through the years, Ling guarded the treasure. And those who came too close to the hiding place saw a man on a horse in the distance who rode towards them at a gallop. He loomed up before them, his great sword swinging, and death was their reward for stumbling out of the treasure. Never did Kublai Khan send to him, yet Ling remained faithful to his trust. When the great Khan died, no one knew where Ling was, and the treasure became lost. Ling was never heard from again. Is this story true, or, or are you just making it up to, to amuse us? I assure you, Miss Carlton, this story is true. Has anyone ever tried to find the treasure? Oh, yes, many have tried, but with no success. Then, actually, there's no authentication for the story. I have reason to believe there is. Why? Recently, just before I left my country, I came into possession of this. Mm -hmm. well, what is it? It is a copy of an old map that I discovered in one of the caves near the mountains. Hmm. Then you've actually looked for the treasure. Yes. I stumbled onto the cave quite by accident. It had once been inhabited because I found ancient weapons and cooking utensils. On the wall of the cave, there was drawn the lines you see before you. That I copied down on this piece of parchment. I believe this map will lead me to the treasure of Kublai Khan. And you intend searching for it when you return to your country? Hmm? Yes, I do. No, I wouldn't mind going with you. Neither would I. Then why do you not come with me? Why don't we? Do you think we could, Brad? Well, we could arrange it, I suppose. I know. I could take a leave of absence. So could I. Well, I could get it away easily enough. Of course. And if we do find it, the treasure belongs to you, Mr. Hussein. There will be enough for all of us. Enough to make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. Then let's do it. Right. And whether we find anything or not, the, the trip will be worth it. There, 
there is one more thing I must tell you. And that is? When I said that many had tried and none had succeeded, I should have added that many have died or been killed in their attempt to locate the treasure. For it is said that General Ling still guards the treasure of the great Khan, that he still waits for word from Kublai Khan, and that he brings death to any who stumble upon the treasure. We'll return to the Hall of Fantasy in the tale of the treasure of Kublai Khan in just a moment. Back now to the Hall of Fantasy and the tale of The Treasure of Kublai Khan. We were sure that the warning Abdul Hussein had given us was only a natural outgrowth of the legend that had grown up concerning the lost treasure of Kublai Khan. Even Hussein was dubious of the last part of his story. In the two months which followed, we cleared ourselves with the authorities, obtained visas, took our shots, and were ready to embark on the search for the treasure of Kublai Khan. It was the day before our departure that Marion mentioned her dream. What's the matter, Marion? You should be excited and happy. We're leaving tomorrow morning. I know, but, well, I just can't help it. Is, is Abdul coming here tonight? No, we're meeting him at the airport tomorrow. Anything wrong? I don't know. It, it's just that I had a dream last night. It frightened me. And I can't seem to shake it. Well, what was it about? Well, do you remember that story that Abdul told us about General Ling riding his horse and killing everyone who came across the treasure? Yes. Well, the dream I had last night, it... it seemed so real. Hmm. Well, tell us about it. Well, I... I dreamt that we were over there. we just crossed the desert. Ahead of us, the mountains rose up into the sky. I heard hoofbeats, and I looked up and, and saw a man on horseback riding toward us. He reined in and pointed to us. Go back, he said. Go back before it is too late. And then everything became confused. I, I dreamt that we stood there before the treasure, the four of us. And suddenly, I heard the hoofbeats again. And he rode up beside us and said, I warned you, now it is too late. And then he, he raised his sword over our heads. It started coming down and, and I screamed. And then I woke up. And then what happened? Well, that was all. Except that when I fell back to sleep, I, I dreamed I saw pictures. Pictures? Yes, like, like photographs. They flashed before me one by one. I, I saw the four of us standing before the treasure, and then the man with the sword in his hand, and Hussein lying on the ground, dead. And... And what else? I saw you, Brad, lying on the ground, and you were dead. <laughs> it was just a dream, Marion. You were probably excited last night when you went to bed. You've been all been living for the day when we start out. That's why you had that dream last night. I don't know. Maybe it, it was a warning of some kind. It was only a dream, Marion. That's right. It's just a dream, nothing else. <laughs> Your brother intends to live a long time. Still, it... It seems so real. It, it's so real. Telling us about her dream seemed to relieve Marion, and by the following morning, we had all forgotten about it. We had beautiful weather all through the flight. We stopped first in Africa, changed planes, and then flew over Libya, Egypt, the Red Sea, Saudi Arabia, across the Persian Gulf, and landed finally at Bandar Shapur, perhaps a hundred miles away from Abadan. We went by car to Isfahan. There we picked up a guide and camels and started across the desert. We traveled slowly, being able to make only about 30 miles a day. Eight days after we left Isfahan, we caught sight of the Elbers Mountains. We were seated around the campfire. Uh, we have not much farther to go. We should reach the cave sometime late tomorrow. The cave? Yes, I want to go there first, to make sure the map is absolutely correct. From there, we will follow the map to its treasure. What if the map doesn't lead us to the treasure? 
But that is possible, I know. If that is the case, then I shall begin all over again. I have searched for Kublai Khan's treasure for ten years. I shall continue to search for it. <laughs> the guide you hired isn't very talkative. Uh, you are foreigners. He is afraid of you. Does not trust you. But he is a good man. I hope we do find the treasure, Abdul. Oh, I'd hate to go back empty-handed. I have a feeling that we will. And the stories about General Ling? You mean that he still guards the treasure? Yes. They are not true, of course. It would be impossible for him to still be alive. What was that? What? The sound I just heard. Only the call of the jackal, Miss Carlton. Oh, it frightened me. It is a brother to the wolf. They say its call means misfortune. There it is again. Relax, Marion. We're all on edge. I suppose so. What was that? The camels, Miss Carlton. The call of the jackal makes them nervous. Take it easy, Marion. Oh, I don't know why I'm so nervous. Unless... Unless what? I... I had that same dream again last night, Brad. It was just a dream, Marion. I know, but it was surreal. But even when I woke up, I, I felt that I'd actually been there. That you and Mr. Hussein were really dead. I must admit that the howling of the distant jackal even made me nervous. Throughout the night, the creature cried out to the heavens as if it were warning us that death would be the only treasure we would find. The following afternoon, toward sunset, found us at the cave. This is the cave. Follow me. I was in such a hurry last time, I could not be sure that my map was accurate. We must be sure, for that will save us much trouble. Shine your flashlights around. Hmm. Someone lived here, all right. Seems like we've stepped into another world from out of the past. Shine your lights over on that wall, if you will. Yes. There. You can see what I copied down. I will check my map against it. I wonder who lived here. Someone long since dead and buried, Marion. You know, it is a trifle frightening to be in here in this cave. Where someone lived generations, probably centuries ago. Yes, I thought so. What is it, Abdul? My map was wrong. In my haste, I made a mistake. However, now it is corrected. Are we going on today? No, no. It is much too late. The sun will set soon. We will continue tomorrow. We will camp here for tonight. Not, not in the cave. Why not? Well, not in here. Outside, yes, but, but not in here. We will camp outside, Miss Carlton. Yes, of course. Huh. It's just that... What's the matter, Marion? I thought I heard something. I didn't hear anything, nor did I. Brad? No, Marion. I didn't hear a thing. Then I... I must have been wrong. What... What did you think you heard? A voice. A soft voice saying, Go back before it is too late. What uh, time is it? Almost 11. Well, Marion had the right idea. She went to bed almost an hour and a half ago. Mm. Well, I think it is time for me to retire also. What uh, happened to Ali, the guide? Well, I imagine he retired some time ago. I thought I saw him go into the cave. When? A short while ago. It is possible he went in, but why he should go, that I cannot understand. If, unless it is something that... <laughs> That was a scream. It came from the cave. We'd better take a look. Right, come on. All right. oh. Ollie, are you all right? He does not answer. Well, we'll see what's wrong in a moment. Oh. There he is. Ollie. What's wrong? Just a moment. Well? He's dead. What? Yes. He's dead. Go. Go back. Let death be my reward. (coughs) 
You are listening to the tale of The Treasure of Kublai Khan on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And now, back to our story entitled The Treasure of Kublai Khan. We stood looking down at the prostrate form of the guide stretched out on the floor of the cave. We had heard his scream just a moment before, and we had run from the camp into the cave, only to find him dead. Kuba, less dead, be my reward. What was that? I don't know. I heard something. Yes, so did I. Shine your light around. No one seems to be in here. Then where did that voice come from? Maybe we were mistaken, perhaps... It was just the sound of the wind we heard. No, it was a definite warning. It said, go back, lest death be thy reward. I am not going to turn back now. Not after all these years. No one's asking you to go back, Abelo. What are we going to do with him? Bury him here. And then in the morning, we can start out as early as possible. We should reach the treasure by tomorrow evening. I have warned you. Back into the desert. We are traveling in the right direction. The treasure is located at the lost oasis. I hope you're right, Abdul. I know I am right. We're only a few miles from the mountains. But we were at the foot of the mountain before, Abdul. The oasis lies west and south of the mountains, and that is the way we are heading. Does that wind seem to be any stronger than usual? A little. Do you think it might be blowing up a sandstorm? Uh, it is quite possible. We must make the oasis within the next few hours. should be just up ahead. I can't see a thing in the storm. Unless we have gotten off the trail, we should be at the oasis any minute now. I hope you're right, Abdul. Isn't that something up there? I can't see. Yes, it is the oasis. We made it. After ten years of searching, I have found the treasure. Somewhere in that oasis, my friends, is the treasure of Kublai Khan. getting dark. Yes. The night is upon us. Maybe we ought to wait until the morning comes. No, we've come this far. I want to see the treasure now. I sense that we are getting very close to it. Look, up ahead. <sighs> yes. Yes, that is it. Be careful. Ah, we have found it. We have found the treasure of Kublai Khan. <sighs> wait, it's like a small oriental temple. There's no doorway, just an arch opening into the building. It's... Let's go inside. Yes. All right. Shine your flashlights around. Oh, the whole building is covered with, with open trunks and bags of gold and jewels. The wealth and grandeur of an empire now dead. We don't belong here. I feel that, that we're looking at a dead world. The night is upon us. And the jackal is telling the creatures out of the desert... That we are here. Why don't we go back to our camp? Just a minute. I'm going to take some of these with me. I want to tell myself this isn't just a dream. Put them back, Brad. What's the matter with you, Marion? Maybe you ought to put them back, Brad. I think Marion's right. This is the treasure of a dead world. It should remain dead. You mean we should leave a treasure here and go back empty-handed? Don't be a fool. Uh, and I shall take some, too. Uh, huh? uh, uh, yes, I do. Uh, the jewels we hold in our hands are enough in themselves to make us rich. But all of it is ours. <laughs> all of it. Yes, all of it. Who's that? It's Alan. Oh, I... I was afraid it would be someone else. Who? General Ling. I couldn't see. Neither could I. That's why I came out here. Listen. Yes, I heard it too. Sounds like... like someone riding a horse. Marion, look, over there. In the moonlight, there... There's a man on a horse, riding toward our camp. We... It's just like the dream I had. Abdul! I heard something out here. Yes. So did I. There's a man on a horse riding towards our camp. Well, maybe someone else has found the treasure. We must stop him. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Brad, yes. come back. Abdul, don't be a fool. Brad! 
I'm going after You're him. staying right here. The man on the horse has a sword. Look out, Brad! Look out! He's the sword! He's... Ah! Dead. Both of them. Yes. It, it was just like the dream. Just like the dream. We should never have come here. Listen, he's coming back. What are we going to do? We'll wait here for him. There's nothing else we can do. I warn you. Still, you did not heed my warning. The two of you are free to return to your own land. The other two coveted the treasure of the great Khan, and so I brought death to them. Leave now. Leave this place. And wipe from your minds all the thoughts of the treasure. For I must guard the treasure of Kublai Khan until he sends for me. Those who seek the treasure will find the way. Characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs>